The read then speak question is challenging. It's one of the most difficult questions on the test. If you want to get a higher production score, go through these five steps to help you do that. Let's get started right away and waste no time. The read then speak question shows up one time on the Duolingo test, so it's very important and you really have to nail this. So this five step process is going to help you. We want to be fluent when we speak. We want to sound like a native speaker. That's one part. The other is that you have to speak for 90 seconds. The biggest problem that people have when they take this test is they finish it too early. They're done in 30 seconds. They're done in 40 seconds. This five step process will help you speak from second one all the way to second 90. Step one is pretty easy. We're going to use the question to help us structure the answer. And I call this, I would like to talk about. For example, if the question says, discuss something that you were thankful for recently, we're going to start the answer by saying, I would like to talk about something that I was thankful for recently, or I would like to discuss something that I was thankful for recently. And we add our topic, which was spending Thanksgiving with my family. I'll go into the full sample question when we're done. That's step one. I would like to talk about the question. Put it in your answer. Step two is called the who, what, where, when, how, why. People always finish these questions much too soon, so they don't give them chance, they don't give themselves a chance to speak all the way till the end of the question. Don't just say that you were thankful to spend Thanksgiving with your family. Who did you spend Thanksgiving with? Where was it? Get into specific details. How far did you travel to get there? How much did you spend on an airplane ticket? Get into those type of details because that allows you to speak at least 10 to 15 seconds longer. Step number three is called use the core ideas. If you're not familiar with core ideas, check out this video here and it will give you a breakdown of how you can use basic ideas of life and apply them to almost every type of question that shows up. In using core ideas, we understand that we have to provide two examples or two reasons for every question type that comes up. Remember, we don't want to be caught off guard and be shocked and go through long moments of silence or repeat ourselves again and again in the question. We want to be sharp, get to reason one and reason two. So for reason one, for this particular question, we could say one reason I was thankful was that I got to spend time with my family and loved ones. We'll go into detail later on that. Another reason I was thankful was that I got to try a lot of delicious food. Reason one, reason two. If you like what you've heard so far on this five-step process and you want other strategies, techniques, and tips that will help you elevate your score, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you can get updates regularly on all the videos that cover the different types of questions on the Duolingo English test. Step four is called bullet points. Now that you've gone through your two reasons and you finish that, we move on to the bullet points. The first bullet point says, why were you thankful? Well, we answered that with our two reasons from our core ideas. How did you show that you were thankful? Did you thank someone? And if so, who? Step five is a conclusion. We've probably already been speaking for close to one minute and 20 seconds. So we have just a few seconds left and we're saying something like, Ultimately, this is the reason that Thanksgiving is such a great holiday. Or ultimately, this is something recently that I was thankful for. So now let's put it all together. We'll look at three different sample questions and apply these five steps so you can see how the answers would work for you. All right, let's get right into it. We'll talk about the first sample question. Discuss something you were thankful for recently. Why were you thankful? How did you show that you were thankful? Did you thank someone? If so, who? Don't be too worried when you see all of these extra bullet points here. You'll answer them in order. Remember that if you were only presented with a topic like this and no bullet points, you wouldn't be able to speak in detail. So the idea of the bullet points is there to help you. So let's take a look at how we would answer this question in the five steps. Starting with the introduction. I'd like to talk about something that I was grateful for recently, which was Thanksgiving Day. That's your first sentence. I'd like to talk about. I would like to talk about. Would is an auxiliary verb, a modal verb. It's a polite request to discuss something in detail. Something that I was grateful for recently. We could have a period here, but what we've done is we've put in a relative 
clause, which was Thanksgiving Day. We're demonstrating complex structure whenever we use an independent clause and a dependent clause. Step number two, the key questions, the who, what, where, when, how, why. We want to go into a little bit more detail about Thanksgiving. In the USA, this takes place every November on the third Thursday, marking the beginning of the Christmas holiday. Our family normally drives for about four hours to our grandparents' house to celebrate. Step three, two reasons and examples. First of all, Thanksgiving is a time of year that all of our relatives come together. We don't have much of a chance during the rest of the year to reunite and all be in the same room, so it's special. My grandparents, my aunts and uncles and my cousins all gather and catch up on each other's lives. There's nothing like the warm atmosphere at that time. Additionally, Thanksgiving is a time for us to enjoy some pretty amazing food. We share turkey, stuffing, sweet potatoes, green bean casserole, salad, cranberry sauce, and so many other dishes. We see that we have a reason in green, and in purple we have a supporting idea. Reason one, reason two. Additionally, purple, a supporting idea. Step number four, the bullet points. We remember the bullet points right here. We may have answered some already by discussing our core ideas. I showed that I was thankful by helping to clean up afterwards. After the big feast, mountains of dishes and pots and pans were in the kitchen to clean and scrub. My brothers and I lent a hand and made sure that my grandparents could just take a rest. I was also certain to sincerely thank my grandmother personally because she and Grandpa were the ones responsible for the turkey, which turned out perfect. We've answered the bullet points. Step five is our conclusion. Ultimately, Thanksgiving Day is something that I've always been grateful for. We're concluding what we've already talked about, and we're also saying a very similar statement that we've said in the introduction in a little bit different fashion. Using the word ultimately, we'll realize later on when we study the CEFR scale, the vocabulary ranking system of when you use higher academic words, you'll score higher. We'll get into that. But an adverb like ultimately is a B2 level word, and you'll generally score higher when you use these level words. So wrapping it up, step one, introduction, key questions, two reasons and examples, answering the bullet points of the question, and a conclusion. Let's move on to the next sample question. Talk about something that gets you excited. What is it? What about it gets you so excited? How often does this happen? Let's go through the same five steps. The introduction. I'd like to talk about something that gets me excited, which is my choice of pursuing a degree in computer science. The key questions, who, what, where. I've been studying computers and keeping up with technology since I've been young. A good friend of mine introduced me to the idea of majoring in this field. How long have I been studying computer science? Who introduced me to computer science? Where do I study? All of these points we want to cover here. Two reasons and two examples. To begin with, the prospect of going into the world of technology and innovation excites me. The opportunity to understand how systems work, create software solutions, and contribute to the advancements in the field is the reason for my enthusiasm. Additionally, Exploring new programming languages and engaging in projects provide a constant source of inspiration. I feel that I can shape the future of technology and be at the front line of innovation. Reason, supporting idea. Reason, supporting idea. Step four, the bullet points. Let's take a look at the bullet points for this question. What is it? What about it gets you so excited? How often does this happen? This is a daily occurrence, whether it's attending lectures, participating in coding challenges, or working on projects, computer science is a constant presence in my life. Remember that when we're listing points and we say participating in coding, working on projects, attending lectures, we want to make sure that we have parallel structure by using the same endings, ing, 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 walking to the store, eating at a restaurant, visiting my friend, 
If we're making lists like that, make sure we're using the same structure. Step number five is our conclusion. Ultimately, my pursuit of a computer science degree is incredibly fulfilling and rewarding. Let's move on to sample question number three. Describe something you have done that you would not normally do. Again, we're not worrying about the bullet points yet, but let's read through them. Why did you do it? How did it affect you? If you could go back in time, would you do it again? Why or why not? Same introduction. I'd like to talk about something that I would not normally do, which was joining the baseball team as a kid. The key questions? Baseball became a huge part of my life after that point. It's a sport that I grew up playing with my friends and family, creating great memories on the field. Who were you with? When did you do it? Where did you play? Number three, two reasons and examples. One reason I really loved the experience was it gave me a lesson in resilience. The sport taught me to face challenges such as striking out or making errors and keeping a positive mindset, striking, making, keeping. Additionally, the game of baseball holds a special place in my heart due to the friendship it fosters, it creates. Being a part of a team and working together to achieve common goal is a unique aspect of baseball. Reason, supporting idea. Reason, supporting idea. Step number four, the bullet points. Let's take a look at the bullet points. Why did you do it? How did it affect you? If you could go back in time, would you do it again? Why or why not? Some of these we may have answered already. If I could go back in time, I would definitely choose to relive those moments on the baseball field. Hitting a home run, the teamwork, and the sense of accomplishment after a hard-fought game made me who I am today. And the conclusion, which wraps up our talk, ultimately, playing baseball has had a profound impact an important impact on my physical fitness and personal development. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope these five steps helped you for the read then speak question. Please subscribe, share this video with your friends. And if you're still wondering whether to take the TOEFL or the Duolingo test, check out this video right here for some great ideas.